Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 55 of the Computer Business Marketing Show. Today's episode is brought to you by Tech Reputation. Tech Reputation offers IT business owners a simple and effective way to manage, acquire, and market their positive reviews online. In addition, the online dashboard includes the ability to enter your company details once and have it published automatically to over 60 directory and review sites and keep it updated, synchronized, and without duplication. For a 14 day free trial visit techreputation.com slash tsb for 10 percent off your setup and monthly subscription with no, with a no risk 30 day money back guarantee all of that you can get at techreputation.com slash tsb on today's episode we have introvert marketing coach kim gray on to teach us how to approach marketing as an introvert i know many of us can relate to this and on the show kim's going to explain how being an introvert can actually be a good thing for your marketing. Plus, she'll cover how to identify the three types of people you should be speaking to in marketing and how to customize your marketing to those people. And you'll learn why there was jazz music playing in the background during half the episode. All that and so much more coming up right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Computer Business Marketing Show. If you own or work in an IT services business, this is the place to be to learn how to get more clients, keep them happy, and grow your revenue. You can watch, download, and or subscribe to all show episodes at computerbusinessmarketing.com. You can also join us live on Facebook every week on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just be sure to like the TechSite Builder Facebook page click the following tab and then select see first so that the podcast will jump to the top of your newsfeed every time we go live. We love uh, to see you live here in the Facebook group. Uh, we, we always have fun asking questions and, and chatting with folks before, before the show begins. Uh, so we'd love to get more people in here because we've got our, usual, our group of usuals and regulars that show up, uh, but we love to see some new faces um, it's kind of like Cheers, right? <laughs> Where everybody knows your name and, and everybody's real friendly and, and it's your chance to ask questions as we're recording the show so that, you know, you can actually get your questions answered by the experts that we have on the show. So it's a great opportunity to interact with the content that we have on the podcast. So um, I definitely uh, look into that. Uh, if you guys are up for it, again, just go to Facebook, go to the Tech Site Builder page, like the page, and then select See First so that uh, in the following tab, so that every time we go live, you don't even have to think about it. You'll get an alert, it'll pop up at the top of your newsfeed and you can uh, check it out. So uh, I'm real excited today. Uh, my guest is Kim Gray and she is uh, an introvert marketing coach, which is uh, kind of a cool concept that I never heard of before, but I was real excited to, to find her because this is something I think a lot of folks in our community can, can use and relate to. Uh, being tech, technical minded people and, you know, computer people, uh, we tend to spend a lot of time behind a computer screen, maybe growing up, we weren't as social as, as some of uh, the other kids in our class. And, and so we, I know I'm guilty of this uh, for a long time, I was very introverted. Um, and I can still be kind of shy if you meet me in person. Uh, the podcast has helped a lot to get me out of that shell. Um, but, uh, you know, interacting with a lot of you guys, I know, it can be uncomfortable to get yourself out there uh, and, and market your business and, and put yourself out there and, and get your business growing uh, because of, of that shyness and that introvertedness. And uh, so that's why I'm real excited to have Kim on. Um, we're going to talk to her about that and kind of dig into uh, how to market your business as an introvert. The good news is you can still market your business and you can still grow your business. And so I'm looking forward to uh, digging into that with her. Before we do that, though, we just have a couple of uh, quick um, announcements and, and just things we want to get off, uh, get out there. Uh, first of all, just want to mention the Computer Business Marketing Newsletter. That is your weekly digest for tips and tricks on how to market your computer business. It's specifically targeted to IT businesses. Um, so it'll give you, uh, you know, all of the, uh, we kind of mix it up. It's, it's a part um, curated content from across the web about just general marketing that we feel would resonate best with IT business owners. And it's also custom content like this podcast, 
um, posts from our Facebook group and other stuff that we um, you know, want to highlight and put front and center for you guys. And it's all out there to uh, basically give you, you know, that weekly inspiration uh, because as you know, uh, being a business owner, you have to always be marketing and always be thinking of the next thing you want to do. Stay on top of the trends, especially as an IT business. You want to make sure that your business is out there on all the latest platforms uh, because your clients are going to be looking to you for, for advice on that stuff. So you want to know what you're doing. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we kind of deliver to you in the computer business marketing newsletter. You can sign up for that. Just head on over to computerbusinessmarketing.com. There's a form there at the top of the website. Uh, where you can opt into that newsletter. Speaking of newsletters, um, this is something I wanted to bring up. Uh, this is something that you've probably heard about. And if you haven't heard about, you've been wondering why you've been getting a lot of emails lately from some of the uh, providers you, you sign up for saying, hey, we updated our privacy policy, or hey, you know, the, the four letters GDPR you might have seen come up. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, that's basically uh, uh, regulations in the EU where they are putting um, some rules around privacy and data and how that is handled uh, by businesses. So when you collect information from your customers, um, there are rules around how you need to um, present that data, how you need to hold on to that data, and how you need to make sure that the end users are able to own their data. So they can take it away if they want to, they can change it if they want to, and you have to be fully transparent about all of that stuff. And even though those rules only affect the EU, it would affect you if your business has any customers in the EU, um, but, or if you live in the EU, of course. But in general, I think it's just good practice anyways to kind of look at what's going on with GDPR and and because uh, probably those regulations will end up trickling into the United States eventually anyways. And it's just kind of good practice. You never know maybe when someone is going to land on your site who is from Europe uh, and you just want to make sure that you, you kind of have all your ducks in a row now. There's a lot of information that's out there and personally, even for me as a business owner, it's been kind of overwhelming with all of the different information that's out there. Um, so I, I stumbled upon one article that I thought was really good and it specifically talks about email marketing. And I, I know that's good, a lot of stuff that we, we talk about on this podcast where, you know, what are some of the rules around opt-in forms on your website? And, you know, when you want someone to sign up for your newsletter or when you want to provide those lead magnets that we talk about all the time, like eBooks or checklists or stuff like that to get people to sign up for your newsletter and then bring in those leads so that you can eventually try to convert them into customers. Um, there are some things you just want to keep in mind uh, with those forms. Um, and this, this article is from Fr Thr Thrive Themes. <laughs> that was a little bit of a tongue twister there. Thrive Themes, I'm going to put that uh, link in the chat in Facebook, um, and then I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. But the, the title of the article is called um, The Smart Way to Make Your Opt-in Forms and Email Marketing GDPR Compliant. And one of the first things that the article says is the EU isn't coming for you. So it, it tries to kind of frame this as, you know, the, the purpose of these regulations are really to make sure the big dogs like Google and Apple and Facebook and those guys are, you know, plain fair, that they're being fully transparent about what they're doing with your data and that you understand what is happening with your data and you have control over your data, which is, you know, the information about you, the information that you generate by using those platforms. Um, so that's really who they're going after. They're not going to be looking at, you know, ABC computer repair in, you know, uh, in um, some small town in the middle of the country and going after you and charging you millions of dollars because you're not complying with, with GDPR. Um, what could end up happening is, if, if, God forbid, you know, there was a data breach or something and your company was involved in that and, and there you had, you know, some customer in the EU that was involved in that as well. And then they, you know, end up losing millions of dollars because of it. And then they, you know, have to sue somebody and they, they you know, have you in their sites. Um, you can, you know, help cover yourself by saying, hey, you know, we're, we're complying with GDPR. We told you what we were going to be doing with your data. And, uh, and so you, you'll be covered that way. But, it's just one of those kind of risk benefit things you have to look at and it might take some time and some effort to make sure you're GDPR compliant, but 
it's something definitely worth looking into, even if you don't have customers in the EU. Uh, but anyway, just to frame it, how the article frames it is, it's it's not some big thing that you have to, you know, um, just, just stay up all night worrying about. Um, but it is just something to, to keep in mind, keep a look at, keep a lookout on. And basically, it breaks it down into four things: how GDPR affects email marketing. Number one. You want to be able to tell your visitors what you will do with their email address before they sign up. So in your email marketing form, your sign up form, you want to say, you know, what you're going to be doing with their email address. Are you going to be um, selling it to a third party? Are you going to be using it to, um, to promote your services? Are you going to be using it just to send a newsletter? How are you going to be using their email address? Number two is you should give visitors a view of the data you've collected about them. So they just need to see what data you have. So it, whether that's some kind of dashboard, um, a lot of times you might be using a third party uh, email marketing software like MailChimp or something. So you just want to make sure that those um, services have a way for the your leads or your customers to view what data MailChimp has about them. And most of the, the email marketing platforms do allow that. Normally, they have a little link at the bottom of the email that says, you know, unsubscribe or update my, my preferences. And that's, that basically covers that. Uh, the third thing is give visitors a way to modify their data. Um, and that is uh, to, or unsubscribe. So, you know, if they need to change their, update their email address or, or name, make sure that it's easy for them to do so. And you get at their, their, they understand how they can do that. And then finally, last, and this is probably one of the biggest changes, is you want to make sure that you uh, have a way to remove, completely remove their data uh, from your systems. Um, and sometimes you might have their, their information sitting in some different places. For example, if you have a, an email, or if you have a lead capture form on your website and you're using a plugin for that, that plugin might store their information on, in, your, in your website database. Plus, their information is also in your email marketing software like MailChimp. So it's in two places. So you need to make sure that if someone reaches out to you uh, and, they, and they fall within the, the GDPR uh, ecosystem, that if they ask you to remove their data, that you're able to remove it from both places. Um, and that, that's something to kind of keep an eye out. And that's something that probably not a lot of people were keeping tabs on before this. Um, but anyways, you can dig into that article. It's a nice long article that gives examples about what a good email capture form should look like. Um, but that's something to to keep uh, in the sites there. Hey, Kim, have you have you looked into GDPR stuff in your own business? Oh my gosh, it's been. I mean, I was losing losing sleep over the weekend, yeah. knowing that May twenty fifth had come, and my VA was still working on the pieces I needed. And when she gave me that checklist, I said, you know, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You know, and right. it's like you can get so overwhelmed with all of this. But I'm so glad you said they're not coming for me because <laughs> I'm not doing all of this stuff. I'm going, I have privacy right. policies and I will give people another opportunity to opt into my newsletter list, which I didn't have before. If they opted in for a free gift, they just went on my list. Right. So now I have to include a box that says, do you also want to receive my newsletter if they, whatever they opt in for. So that's it for me. I'm doing those two changes. <laughs> Keep it moving. Right. Exactly. And, and I think that that's a good one, right? Because another part of it is that, you know, you people who sign up for something need to know what that entails. So if they're also getting on a newsletter, but you didn't make that clear when they signed up, then that's something that, that needs to be, you know, up, up front. And so the way to remedy that would then be to, you know, send them an, an email saying, Hey, we just want to make sure you're cool with being on our newsletter list. Um, yep. Go ahead and let us know that. So cool. Great. Um, yeah. So, so that link will be in the show notes. Um, all right. So that, that's all I have. Um, we're going to try to do things a little bit differently. Normally this is where I would mention my sponsor, but I'm going to try something different and I'm going to try to weave in the sponsor message into the interview. Um, I've heard other podcasts do this and I've always kind of liked it because um, it helps keep the flow going. You don't have to wait so long before we get to the interview. Um, and also I can kind of, if there's a part in the interview where the sponsor might tie in somewhere, like if we mention something that, uh, that, that has to do with the sponsor, I might just say, oh, hey, by the way, the, that, that reminds me we have a sponsor about blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to try that this time. So we'll see how that goes. So <laughs> 
<laughs> you're, you're my guinea pig, Kim. Okay. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so, so that means we're going to go ahead and jump into the interview right now. So, um, for today's episode, I am excited to have Kim Gray. Now she's an air force veteran and introvert marketing coach, and she guides marketing shy coaches to embrace proven and easy to implement tools and techniques to make connections in person and online with confidence so they can welcome an ongoing flow of quality leads, clients, and cash in their business without sacrificing their quiet, thoughtful ways. And I like that word thoughtful. That's, that definitely kind of gets to the heart of why a lot of folks are a little bit um, unwilling to, to put themselves out there. Uh, so Kim, hey, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for, thanks for uh, being on and for uh, participating a little bit in the, in the intro there. Thank you, Matthew. It's, I'm so excited to be here and to be able to speak on this topic, which is like my heart topic. I just love it. And being able to work with the introvert coaches that I do and being of service to them and then being able to give that to your audience is my honor. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, uh, no, my pleasure. Um, so let's, uh, we always start out the interviews just uh, quickly, if you can Give us uh, an overview of you know, a, a bit of your experience and uh, kind of what got you to where you are today as an introvert marketing coach, um, and maybe also a little bit about what you, what you did in the Air Force. Okay. <laughs> I know that's a lot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so the Air Force, I'll make that one, is really short. I, mean, I, was, I was in the Air Force for 10 years, and I started out in sheet metal repair. So oh. I would walk the tank, the, the, walk the wing of the tankers and the bombers and did sheet metal repair. And it was, the, you know, I was like, um, um, I was a tomboy. So that was perfect oh, cool. until I cut my lip trying to fix a cowl repair. I was doing a cowling repair and I pulled up on the, on the grips and it hit me in my face. Oh. I changed careers in the next 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's it. I said, oh, no, that's <laughs> I it. I'm done. You know? <laughs> right. So, and then after I got out after 10 years, because it wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> but um, since 2007, I've been enjoying the work I do in helping introvert coaches recognize and overcome their networking and marketing monsters. I love it so much. I went and had five months five stuffed animals made of the monsters that i encounter in working with my coaches and they're, they're so huge i couldn't even bring them on the show today oh. but anyway there's five monsters that come up all the time and around being shy around networking um, technology uh, finding my tribe uh, wanting to expand and reach out and also wanting to create programs. And so these monsters show up in our business in so many different ways that they can keep us as introverts from moving forward, whether it's from lack of success, lack of fear of success, fear of failure, lack of knowledge. It could be all kinds of things, right? So extroverts feel it too. But I work, I work with the introverts and by helping them um, recognize these monsters, it really helps us to helps me see that shift that happens for them and they get to they really come away victorious because they can slay their fears around networking in big groups it boosts their confidence to connect with prospects on a regular basis they get to show up online with savvy and walk into a room as though they were hosting the party and many of my coaches have been able to use the strategies and techniques we've designed together to convert prospects into paying clients almost overnight. Nice. So that's, the, that's the way it is now, but that's not the way it's always been. Right. Yeah. So, I, so were you, were you, uh, I guess you probably were an introvert at one point and maybe still consider yourself that way. Oh, I was born an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I had to learn how to overcome these monsters for myself. Right. You know, you know how they say on the airplane, put the oxygen max, put the oxygen mask on you first before you put it on your child. Right. So I had to learn how to, how to survive in my business as an introvert because for a long time, I was that marketing shy coach. I had word of mouth referrals. Business was great. I had long-term clients. Everything was wonderful. 
and then the well, the well started to run dry. Mm. And now I'm panicking because now I wonder where are these where are my next clients coming from. So my best marketing activity was you'll never guess was prayer. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because I figured God <laughs> knew he could tell what I was going through and what I needed. All I needed to do was ask and he would send it my way. <laughs> and he sure did. Nice. But that well, well kept running dry. And I said, I need to, do, you know, I'm going to have to do something different. And that's when I figured out I don't like marketing because I'm an introvert. Mm. And the world markets like extroverts. Right. So if I keep trying to do it like that, I'm always going to be frustrated. Mm-hmm. So what, um, before we kind of dig into to the, to how to market as an introvert, I'm just curious um, to, if we could kind of define what an introvert is. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, maybe someone listening to this, you know, says, well, I, I might be a little shy, but I don't know if I can consider myself an introvert. How, how can you recognize that in yourself? What does that mean? And, and you know, Matt, is uh, Matt, Matthew? Matt, Matt is fine. Matt's good? Okay. Yeah. Introverts are not necessarily shy. We love people and we love life and we love sharing and we, most of us feel we have a calling, a higher calling, a bigger Mm -hmm. purpose, right? And it's really to be of service to others. So we have no problem being in the background. But sometimes we have to step out into into the light, whether it's um, teaching others what we know or being inspirational, right? But we value relationships. And we value those relationships so deeply that we have this small circle of intimate and loyal friends. Mm. So it's not that we're shy. It's just that we don't, we, we value that, that intimacy. We value connecting with people versus collecting massive amounts of information or massive business cards. We, would, we prefer those smaller um, opportunities where we can connect with people one-on-one. So you can, I can always tell an introvert when I walk into an event because they're sitting where I would be sitting <laughs> against the wall or hanging out at the hors d'oeuvre table. And uh, mm. it's not that we, but being around people, oh my gosh, it just drains the energy out of us. And when you, you're being forced to mingle, oh, don't, oh, that's the worst thing you could tell an introvert. Come <laughs> mingle. No, no, I'm good. I'm going to sit right here. Got my glass of wine. I'm good to go. But being by myself, when we're alone, oh my gosh, we get so energized and revived that we can now go back out into the world and get this energy drained out of us. Yeah. So it's always nice to have some place where we can come home and just be with myself or by ourselves, you know? So that's what it is about introverts is we love being with people and helping people. It's just, we'd rather do it in a smaller environment or one-on-one. And that's what makes great coaches. A lot of my, intro- my coaches are introverts and they're amazing because they have that drive and that giving spirit. It's just how do I get them past that fear so that they can make a bigger impact in the world? And I know uh, a lot of our uh, listeners are computer business owners, but they act as coaches, right? They, um, a lot of times they actually do coaching sessions or they teach classes on technology. Um, or even when you're just sitting down with your client trying to fix their computer, you're, you're coaching them through, you know, how to you know, secure your computer and how to avoid viruses and phishing scams and all of that stuff. So I just want people listening to, even though you're hearing the word coaches, that you, you all should consider yourself coaches uh, because that, that's a big part of what we do. Um, and so I think all of this stuff can apply perfectly to, to our listeners. So, so let's jump into, um, so we know uh, maybe some of us have now identified ourselves as introverts and, and we, can, we can relate to, to that description you just gave. Um, but we know we need to get out there. We need to do that networking. We need to grow um, our business by putting ourselves out there, meeting new people and, and spreading the word of our business. So how can we go about getting over the kind of the hurdles or, or maybe the fear or whatever it is that's holding us back from um, reaching our full potential as a marketer? I tell you, uh, there's two things. One, you want to tap into what you love to do. So when we talk about marketing, marketing is about building relationships. It's not about sales. 80% of what you do for your business should be around informing, educating, inspiring others. 20% around promoting. 
until I understood that, when, once I understood that, I said, oh, perfect. Because I didn't want to be a salesperson, but I did want to share. I did want to, you know, I wanted to do those things. And I didn't realize that was marketing. So then I was like, great, I do that all the time, right? right. But, and so the two things I want to do, you want to tap into what you love to do. Is it writing? Is it speaking? Is it teaching? What is that? What is it you love to do? And then second, what is it you love about your business? Is your business designed to allow you to help people improve, overcome? What is it about your business? So you want to take those two things and marry them. And then you come up with a great marketing system that says, I love to write and I want to write about this particular piece of my business. Hmm. I want to educate people around this about this um, piece of, of what I do. So don't worry about all those other things that are out there. Just find what it is you love to do and turn that into a marketing vehicle for your business. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Right. It, it's one of those things that you don't think about it until someone like, <laughs> you know, tells you to think about it. And, and that, that's kind of a common theme I've found with a lot of folks I've talked to on this podcast is the, the, the way to be a good marketer isn't necessarily the tools or the tactics you use to, to get your message out there. It's more kind of looking inward almost and seeing, you know, what, what are the services you offer? And in, in this case, you know, what, what do you, what about your business? How, how do you like to, to communicate? Is it through writing? Is it through uh, in person or videos or whatever? Um, and then, you know, what, what part of your business do you love? What part do you, you know, do you want to, to tell people about? And really it's, it's getting that kind of that inner motivation about your business that makes all the other stuff easy. You can find the tools, you can find the, the techniques and the, and the tricks and, and all of that stuff. And, and, and all of them will end up being successful if you spend this time to kind of think about yourself and your business and what you love doing and what really fits with, with how you work. So that, that, that's encouraging because I think a lot of people listening think, you know, oh, I see these guys who, you know, go, uh, are, are super social and they're meeting all these people and they're so extroverted and, and I, I'm not like that. So I just can't be a good marketer. Whereas there are so many other ways you can market, like you said, writing, um, or, or, uh, you know, videos where you're, you're just talking to a camera, you're not talking to any person. Um, or, you know, there's so many different ways you can do it. And, uh, just to get that motivation about your business and yourself going is really kind of all you need to, to get the ball rolling. Is, is that, am I kind of tracking up with you on that? Absolutely. We have to, I was, I did a, part, a Facebook live with another coach a few last week and we looked at, talked about play and how we can inject play into our business. So that means we need to have fun. So if we're not having fun, then we're doing the wrong things, right? Right. Find what you love so that you can have fun because you want to do this on a consistent basis. It's not a one hit pony. Right. Right. And I know a lot of my, a lot of my clients, they, they just send one message and then they go, how come nobody's signing up? And I'm like, you know, we need five to seven hits before people make a buying decision. But you don't want to keep sticking your hand in their pocket. And the only time they hear from you is when you want to put your hand in their pocket. You've got to build that relationship of no like, and trust. Sorry, it's KLT. No like, and trust. And you build that over time so that when, it, when you want to promote, they already trust you and you are authentic because you've been sharing all this time. And now here you are, been giving, 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 and now it's time for you to ask. And it's okay. Yep. Yeah. And, and you feel more comfortable making that ask. You don't feel like a sleazy salesman because you've established that relationship with those folks first. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So I remember I gave you the two things there. Tap yep. into what you love to do and recognize what you love about your business. So let's take those two and now think about three ways that we can market like an introvert. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. All right. So here's my three tips. I'm going to give you those three and then I'll give you a little bit more. First, recognize who you serve. Oh, yes. The target market. We're going to get back to that in just a second. <laughs> All right. Two, meet the needs of the people in your market. We're going to talk about who those are. And then third, get your people to meet your needs. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, because that's one of the hot, one of the hottest things that most folks overlook is number three. Yeah, that's kind of a new, a new one for me. So I'm, I'm, I'll be curious to see what, what that is. And then you'll go, oh, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's obvious, of course. Mm. So let's think about recognizing who you serve. Now, this is a little bit better or different take on your target market. But for introverts, they are quiet and introspective. That's why the introverts can sit still. They can be in a room. They're going to observe what's going on. Usually, we, we can tell who we want to talk to. We need to sit still and take it in, right? So we're great observers and we're great listeners. So if you sit down at that table and you start talking to an introvert, we, we're going to tap into who you are and what you, what you um, are saying. But the best way to recognize who you serve is to walk in their shoes. Mm. Most of the time, an introvert went into business of, for, for themselves because something happened in their life, whether it was a personal dilemma, a health situation, whatever, something happened that caused them to say, I could work for myself. And now that I am, you know, I want to help other people do the same thing. So when we get in our business and we got our heads down and we're doing the work, we forget to go back and step in the shoes that got us where we are. Right. So the empathy and the hope that we have gets lost. And, and we have to step back and say, now, what, what's the dilemma that I want to help someone else overcome? And I have to remember, was that mine? Right. And it's really hard. It's harder to figure this out if you've not had that transformation and if you've not had that dilemma. And I think, so, I think, um, just quick to interject, I think um, for, for, especially in technology, you know, all of us had that moment where we were excited to learn technology. It was, a, it was a mystery to us. And so we, we, you know, we went in and, and played around on the computer. Or we went to books or we took some classes about it. And that's probably kind of the mindset of, of the customers that you're going to be reaching out to. They might be um, scared of technology or they might be, uh, you know, uh, they, they might not know their way around it. And it's kind of our job to tap into that, how we felt when we were first starting, get them excited about technology, maybe try to figure out what, what can get them excited about the technology and then, and then go from there. And that's, I, I think that would be a good way to kind of go in the shoes of our clients and, and think, well, they don't know as much about technology as I do, so I shouldn't get frustrated or I shouldn't, um, you know, just uh, think that they're dumb or, or whatever. I should empathize with them, remember back when I didn't know so much, and then try to help them work them through it. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that might be a good approach. That's great. So you want to think about your target market. There are three people in your target market. You're going to have those prospects who don't know you, who have a dilemma, who need help. Then you're going to have those who become clients, make that purchase, pay that money, and you're working with them to help them achieve a result. And then third is going to be your inactive or prior clients. So each of these people, okay, have a, have a need. And you have to know the message. You have to know what it is that you provide each of these people. Because when you market, you want to make sure you're speaking to the right people. Okay, so if you're marketing a new program, is it designed for current clients or prior clients, or is it for brand new people? Are you marketing to a cold market or a warm market? We have to keep those things in mind because the language is different and the energy yeah. is different, right? Yeah. And the buildup is different. Because if you're marketing to a cold market, it's going to take a while for you to, you're going to have to spend more time sharing and educating and inspiring and giving them incentives then if you went to your warm market who already know, like, and trust you, you could have a shorter window for your promotion or for your marketing with them. All right. That totally makes sense. And, and I think that that also comes into play with the, the type of services you're offering where, um, especially in IT services, there, there might be certain services that you offer that are better suited to, to um, you know, uh, market to existing clients rather than uh, new clients. For example, one, one that comes to mind 
uh, right away is uh, residential um, MSP or um, like a recurring revenue services where, um, you know, if it, we'll take care of your computer on a monthly basis proactively so that you don't have issues. That's, that's kind of a hard sell for new residential clients who might not understand the value of that type of service for them. So that's better to pitch to existing clients who know like, oh, hey, I've had to hire you to fix my computer quite a few times lately. Um, maybe it might be a good idea to get on a, a monthly service. Um, so that's kind of one where you would want to, going back to what you said, Kim, kind of um, uh, mold the, the way you present it so that it, it fits better with your existing clients rather than wasting time and energy and money to try to market it to, to new clients. Absolutely. You made up a good point. When we're trying to make that sale, we don't have to sell the whole factory. Mm, yes. You know, so you don't have to put yeah. everything on your website because there's some things that absolutely won't work or make sense to the, the average person. And you do want to hold back some things that are like premier or exclusive mm -hmm. services that you only provide to your current or prior clients. So great. Love Thanks it. for bringing that up. All right, so now that we, I've talked about three people in your business, right? Mm -hmm. Prospects, active clients, prior clients. So number two is meet the needs of each person. When I said per people before, that's what I meant. Those three people. Gotcha. Those three people need the, exact, need, need the same, need four things. They all need four things. And they need information, education, solutions and resources mm. now how you set this up in your system to provide that education you're going to inform and educate a prospect a little different than you would an active or prior client so the same information you give to a prospect you're probably not going to give to an, a prior client or a current client because they already have that yeah. so you can give them some information that's a little at a different level. The solutions that you provide to a prospect are what really going to be around your free offers and things of that sort to get them to know, like, and trust you. But the solutions that you provide to your current clients are the services that they're paying you for. The solutions you provide to your past clients could be that maintenance, could be the maintenance that they need, right? So mm -hmm. what do you help, what do you provide that keeps them moving forward. And then the resources, everybody needs more assistance. They need help outside of you. You want to share the other knowledge from other people that maybe you recommend. Mm. They all need that, right? That's, so I think, you, one that, that a lot of people overlook is that resources piece. The, well, and, and, you know, I, some of my coaches um, have been reluctant to put other people's resources on their site and because they're afraid they're going to drive business away. Right. <laughs> and I say, that's collateral. That's like, um, com uh, what's the word I want? Goodwill. Right. When you're willing to put somebody else's stuff on your site and then you let them know, you could let them know, hey, I'm hosting, I'm, I'm putting your stuff on my site. Let them know that that's what you're doing because they'll do the same for you. Yep. You know, so yeah, it's and, that's, and 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 your clients love it because they they then look to you as a as an expert, a reliable resource of information, not only for what you do yourself, but for any other things that they might need. And I know yeah. this this could work in IT where you you might not you know develop a website, so you might have a partnership with a with a web developer that you can refer your clients to, or even something totally outside of technology like a an accountant or um, you know, a lawyer, uh, you can have all of these resources available to your, to your customers because if you're working on their computers, chances are you're going to also get uh, information about their business in general. Like, oh, hey, we have this accounting program and it's really frustrating. We don't know how to balance our, you know, our profit and loss statements and we need some help with this. And you're like, oh, hey, I know the perfect person. I've got this resource I can refer to you. And it's, it's a great way to build goodwill um, and also just make connections with other people, you know, other business owners. Yeah, you know, that's that goodwill with, with others. 
as introverts, we've got to reach out to other people and include them in our network. And that's why marketing as an introvert can happen because we love to collaborate with others. We need to build relationships with complementary folks, peers that have either that provide that serve our same target market with something that we may not and find find people who who you can like who you like do the research online find out where they hang out find out if they get if they work with your target market and if anybody really cares enough about working with them do they already have paying clients do they have a, a following you don't want to hook up with someone who's you know, I got two people. That, that's not going to help me. Right. So you have to be willing to, to, to understand what is it you need. And if you're trying to grow your business and grow your list and grow your presence, then you're going to have to piggyback off of somebody else's relationship. And you have to be purposeful and intentional in making these right connections. Great. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. So... We talked about recognizing who you serve and meeting the needs of each person, prospects, active clients, prior clients. So here's number three. Get your people to meet your needs. Prospects, current clients, prior clients. How do you get these three people to meet your needs? What do you this, think? Th this sounds counterintuitive because isn't it my job as a business owner to meet their needs? not have them meet my needs. So um, the, the first thing that that's what I first think when I see this is um, it's kind of backwards. I, how, how, I, why would I think of them meeting my needs? Um, uh, so, so that kind of confuses me. So that's why I'm kind of interested in, in what, uh, what you mean by that. Okay. All right. So what we want to do, do you want to make sure that your marketing system works like a well-oiled machine? Your marketing system is part of your business. It's not an event. So when you set it up to work as part of your business, it's going to work all the time. Now, when you're putting things out there and you're sharing and you're giving, there comes a point where you're going to need some calls to action. Yes. Okay, CTAs. Yes. Call to actions. So when you give that information and you're giving them what they want because they opted in, so they want what you just said you had for them. Don't forget to ask them what, to tell them what you need them to do next. Gotcha. Yes. You need to let them know what do you want them to do next? If it's a prospect who went and, and downloaded uh, a free report, what do you want them to do next? I need you to go to my website. I need you to, schedule a call with me see if we can work together it's okay to ask That's also right. we have this thing called autoresponders i don't know why i don't know why we have one message mm. the one when they opt in they get one message thank you for your opt-in please download the report that's it they never hear anything anymore so Here's the tr cold, hard truth. If you do that, you will, they won't do anything more. And you'll forget to reach back and continue the conversation with them. But an autoresponder, and I tell you, you got to have at least five, at least five messages in your autoresponder series. I could say seven to eight, but that would make some of you run out of the room with your hair on fire. So I'm going to say at least have five. Okay because you need to kind of slow walk people, like leave breadcrumbs for them, continue to educate and inform them. If it's a free offer, whatever that free thing is, you want to continue to give them more tips. But you always want to have like a PS, click here to schedule a complimentary session. Mm. Click here to visit da 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 da. Click right. here to download something. Get them to engage with you through your autoresponders. And I, I'm a big fan of also um, in, in autoresponders, but any, any communication is to um, try to limit the, the number of calls to action you have to one or two. Um, otherwise, you know, people, 
because you really you should only have one or two actions you want people to take per per message but if you give them lots of options like hey follow us on facebook hey you know visit our services page hey read this article and you give them all these things to do a lot of times they just won't do any of them or they'll do the one thing that you probably didn't want them to do in the first place just because you made it an option so that that's that's one thing that i like the more to the more auto responders you have in the series you can have each one of those be a certain action and each of those actions be a little bit more uh, involved like the first one is maybe just read this article the second one is let us know what you think about that article you just read the third one is maybe now you're asking them to buy a, a small product or a tripwire product or something and and that kind of thing to to kind of lead them into it so i, I think you're you're right in line with with uh, what i was thinking as far as those auto responders and, and and the calls to action okay so that's for the prospects that's for prospects. Okay. That's getting them into your into your funnel, so to speak. And that and and if you do an autoresponder, it's that part of that well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. You set it and forget it, and you space those messages out over a series of days. And then, um, by that fifth or sixth um, autoresponder, you kind of want to wrap up this this uh, this stage of the communication letting them know that you'll be in touch through your monthly newsletter or whatever that is that you use to connect with them on a regular basis going forward. And then they'll just get the newsletter unless they opt in for something else through your newsletter. But no matter what you have where they can opt in for, there needs to be a series of autoresponders because you're trying to get them from the prospect to the client. So for your, for your active clients, Let's talk about them getting them to meet your needs. Now, they made a purchase, right. but that doesn't mean the marketing ends. So they made a purchase and they're working with you now. What do you think the call to action should be with them? Um, they've made a purchase. Um, so the call to action should be to, I don't know, make, make a different purchase. <laughs> True. <laughs> That yes, but how about as remember we want to build relationships and we want them to trust us to do what? Give us a testimonial. Aha. Uh -huh. Or right. send us a referral. Okay. Hey, let's pause there because I almost forgot about the fact that I needed to mention the sponsor in the <laughs> of the interview because I was so into what you were talking about. But this reminded me that this fits perfectly into um, our, our sponsor for this episode, which is Tech Reputation. And Tech Reputation will fit right into this part of the process with your existing customers where you want to get a review or a referral from them. Uh, because what Tech Reputation does is it's basically an automated system, and this fits perfectly into the, uh, the automating the, the, s the system that Kim was talking about, where we want to automate the, uh, the review generation. So what Tech Reputation will do is it will um, allow you to send your customer a message after you do service with them and ask them, how, how was the service? You know, how was your experience? And if they rate the experience good, then it forwards them to leave a review on uh, any number of predetermined review sites that you set uh, ahead of time. Some of those could be Google, Yelp, Facebook. They have dozens of different services that you can forward your clients to leave a review. If the person uh, in your message you send them, if they said they didn't have a good experience, then instead of sending them over to those services to possibly leave a bad review, it'll send them back to you. So it'll say, oh, hey, tell us what you didn't like about the service and let us give us the opportunity to help make it better. So it, it helps bring them back into, into your, your, uh, your cycle of communication so you can help to right whatever wrong or whatever problem that they might be having. Because sometimes customers could, can have an issue and not tell you right off the bat. They might be shy or they might you know, have to think about it a little while first. And then you know, a couple of days later, they're like, oh, I didn't really like that so much. Let me leave a bad review. So instead, you're, you're catching them before they do that. You're going to give, give you an opportunity to fix that issue. And then once they, uh, you know, if you fix it, and then maybe you can ask them again uh, for that good review. But it, it automates all that, so you don't have to even think about it. As soon as you're done with the service, it'll kick off an automation with Tech Reputation, and Tech Reputation will... Um, integrate with some of your uh, favorite services. So like Repair Shopper 
so that you can fit that into your workflow and your automation that you already have. And then once you get those good reviews, Tech Reputation takes it a step further and allows you to uh, display those reviews on your website. So it'll aggregate all the different reviews from all those different review sites. Instead of you going out and copy and paste or, or finding a link to those places, it'll aggregate all those in one feed and then wow. you can insert that feed into your website. And, uh, and again, Tech Reputation has integrations with services like Tech Site Builder so that the website you have on Tech Site Builder will automatically have that review feed in your website. So you just, you, you just let the system go and it's putting reviews on your website, it's capturing the reviews for you, and you can not even have to think about it. So that's the beauty of Tech Reputation. <laughs> yeah, Kim is liking that as well. Okay. Um, so uh, you can check that out at techreputation.com slash TSB. They have a deal for you there. As a listener of the show, if you go to that page, you can save 10% off uh, your monthly subscription and your setup fee. Um, and that's for the life of your, uh, your subscription to Tech Reputation. So check that out. Let them know that the Computer Business Marketing Show sent you. Just go to www.techreputation.com dot com slash tsb uh so kim sounds like that that the the works right into your kind of automating this part where you're getting the people to meet your needs you're doing the calls to action one of those calls to action for your existing clients could be sending them to tech reputation that's a great lead in you did that so well i just gotta say <laughs> good, good i almost forgot so i'm glad you you said something that that uh, sparked it in my head so then the last one this is the one where most people drop the ball is prior clients they say well they made the purchase I delivered the service we're good thank you very much and they sit there as these warm people that never ever the, the relationship ends and and when I work with my clients I'm like you have all of these inactive clients. They love you already. What, you're not even talking to them ever again. We set up a nurture campaign. Nurture those leads. You need to go ahead and continue to educate them. You need to go ahead and thank them for their business, right? Then you can give them an opportunity to have a check-in call with you. You can send them some messages around new resources that you've put out that maybe they didn't get because now they're in your, in your funnel, so they didn't see that campaign that you just ran for new people. This is another way to ask for those testimonials and also ask for referrals. So there's two ways, that two opportunities. You can do it while they're active clients or you can do it while they're an inactive client. But don't give up the relationship once that the work is done because for you, it's part of your well-oiled machine keep that relationship going that's so important and and you know i find that uh, you my best new clients are usually existing clients right if i have a new service or if i have uh you know if i need to do a marketing push uh if i do that to past clients or existing clients they're always way more receptive to that than trying to find new people uh so in order to keep that going, you need to stay in touch with those people. Don't just let them hear from you when you have something to sell. Uh, you know, keep that education going. I think like a newsletter is a great way to do that. Um, but also uh, just periodically checking in, like you said, thanking them for their service, sending a thank you card or a thank you email. Um, that's, that's, that's definitely great to, to keep in mind. So you can see, Matt, being an interview, introvert can be a blessing. Yes. When it comes to marketing and networking, we have so many gifts that we bring to the table. You just need an approach that works for you and your style of relationship building. You can clear those scary monsters out from under the bed when you realize that marketing is all about doing what we do best, building great relationships. That's right. Oh, that's great. Um, I, I'll have to, is there a place where I can see the pictures of these monsters? I'm very curious what these these monsters look like now oh my gosh yes <laughs> well you can see them on on my facebook group um and help me get it done they they are regular features in that group there and uh, that's a free group where i work with my introvert coaches and even virtual assistants are in that group oh cool and um they come in here and they get support to kick those monsters to the curb 
and we have daily interactions in the group as well as a private accountability group. So there's a lot going on inside that free Facebook group for introvert coaches and VAs and, uh, get, who, want, who want to increase their marketing savvy. And for your guests, for your, for your people, I want to also encourage them to go to helpmegetitdone.com when they can download a copy of my newest e-guide called Five Insightful Ways that Introvert Coaches, but any introvert really, can increase their marketing savvy. So I have some great information in there. Lots of great resources there. Um, and I think, you know, as an introvert uh, and, and those listening as well, um, uh, it would, it's exciting to find someone who we can relate with and who, you know, understands what we're going through when we look at all of these, when we get overwhelmed with all of these different marketing tactics and we think it's all about being extroverted and all about, you know, being the life of the party and, and having the, uh, a personality that dominates everybody when really, you know, uh, as an introvert, you have some, some, some key uh, secret weapons like um, that, um, that empathy and that being able to, you know, observe and understand how people are feeling and that thoughtfulness that can really resonate uh, in your marketing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I, I encourage folks to check out those resources and, and, uh, and get in touch. Thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for being a guest on the show. Um, I don't know if you heard this or if, if people on the podcast will be able to hear this, but there's been some soft jazz music playing in the background. And for some reason, that's because I accidentally triggered my Alexa with something I said, <laughs> and it started playing jazz music station in the background. I don't know <laughs> what I said. <laughs> it, it just started playing it, and I... This is kind of a nice soundtrack for me, actually. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, just thought, thought I'd leave you with that, that, uh, that funny note. But thanks again, Kim. You know, we, there was actually some other topics I wanted to touch on that we didn't get to get time to do this time around um, that I'd love to have you back on the show in the future to, to dive into. So uh, I would love, love to, to come back. back. Just let me know. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys, and I'd uh, love to have you guys back as uh, viewers and watchers of the show. Uh, in the meantime, let's keep the conversation going. Head on over to computerbusinessmarketing.com. You can find all the links we mentioned on this episode in the show notes, uh, and as well as you can leave a comment about what you thought of the episode. You can reach out to me over there. You can sign up for the newsletter, all of, and you can look, uh, find out more about our sponsor. All of that stuff is available at computerbusinessmarketing.com. And of course, I uh, got one more CTA for you. I'm going against my own <laughs> advice and I have lots of different calls to action. But this one is, is an easy one. And, and it's one that, that I you know, just ask you guys to do if you haven't done it already. And that is, if you listen to the show on iTunes or Stitcher, go ahead and leave us a review. Let us know what you think of the show. Uh, what kind of guests do you want to hear? What kind of guests have you heard that you like that you want to have back? Uh, you know, we build the show for you guys. So we want to hear from you about what you want to see on the show. And what better place to do that than to leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, every comment that you leave there helps our show to be found by others on those platforms. Finally, don't forget to check out our sponsor. That's techreputation.com. Thank you, everyone, for checking out this episode of the Computer Business Marketing Show. My name is Matthew Rodella saying, here's to your success. <laughs>